session is all about performance tuning SIS and everything to do with it. It is being recorded, so you can actually watch this uh, live uh, later. Um, and we'll, we'll, you'll get an email with a recording link. I think it's on our website under Learning Center. A um, little bit myself, my name is Brian Knight. My Twitter handle is at Brian Knight. Uh, not very creative there, but I'm a SQL Server MVP out of Jacksonville, Florida. And also the founder of Pragmatic Works. Uh, we're a BI consultancy. We do training, and we also build tools around, around the Microsoft SQL Server platform. Um, I've authored a number of books, uh, actually more closer to 15 now. Uh, we sell them outside of my, uh, my van, usually, by the flea markets. And I blog at a website called BIBN.com. Now, this session uh, is assuming that you know the basics of SIS already. So we're going to jump right into it. We're not going to jump into you know, how we create connection managers and all that. We're actually going to focus on, on a three or 400 level session, uh, giving you advanced criteria of how to, how to performance tune SIS and a whole bunch of tips and tricks around it. So let's get this begin. So let's start. Uh, uh, let's start with. We're going to start with actually tuning the sources. Then we'll jump into transforms and then destinations. Lastly, uh, oh, uh, you're not supposed to be seeing. Uh, are you seeing my waterfall, uh, uh, Rachel? Are you seeing a slide? Nope. I'm um, actually. I'm only seeing your um, webcam. Oh well, that's a problem. There we go. <laughs> I did my whole intro and did not hit the share there we screen. Go. Yep, I can see All that. right, sorry about that, guys. You should not have been seeing my waterfall. Sorry. Thank you, Fred, for uh, catching that. Um, <laughs> all right, so we're going to talk about tuning our sources, transforms, and destinations, which is funny because I have all these great po jokes in here and all that. And only Fred, well, Fred's the only one that caught out of 200 people uh, caught that uh, yeah, I wasn't showing my slides. So thank you, Fred. All right, so let's let's begin with the um, uh, the sources first. So. Uh, the part of the SIS tr biggest trick in the book is really knowing when to use which pieces in SIS. So SIS, SIS has lots of components, and you know that old adage that when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail? Well, the same thing applies to SIS. When you have SIS, everything looks like a task, a transform, or a destination of some sort. So you want to make sure you're using the right tool for the job. Sometimes that means not using SIS. So doing things like sorting or even joining in some cases. Uh, if you're in the same database, you want to do as much as you can in that old ADB source using T-SQL or S4 procedure. So doing things like sorting will ultimately um, help you when you load in the destination, reduce your fragmentation, and do whatever things. Let me close my Outlook there. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't realize I had that open. Um, so we want to go ahead and, and try to find ways of tuning that the best we can. And I'll show you some examples in a moment. If you're pulling data out of a flat file, you want to use fast parse if you trust your data source. And I'll show you what that means in a moment also. The fast parse property essentially means that there's a contract between SSIS and that flat file. So as I'm reading data out of a flat file, if there's any kind of dates or numbers, it's going to parse those automatically for you to make sure that you're not passing the value of A into a number. So what we can do is if we trust the data, if we know it came from a database anyways, or we know it came from the mainframe, but it's already been cleansed, we can make sure that we turn on fast parse and it skips that parsing process and ultimately increases the time performance to read data out of the flat file. So let me show you what that looks like here. I'm going to hop out real quick and I'm going to open up a package here. That's our master's class here called fast parse. All right, now first I'm going to show you the default behavior for SIS, the, the way it always is anyways. So I have this large flat file, about a million rows or so, and I'm just sending it to a row count as a, as a terminator. Let me run this, and let's just kind of get a benchmark on how we are now. This is a relatively fast process in this case, because it, it's a million rows, yes, but it's also um, a fairly fast drive. So this will take only a few seconds to run, ultimately. So this whole thing, in my case, uh, ran in about 7.2 seconds. Uh, on many of our student machines, that process is about a half a, half a minute to run. Uh, but with solid state drives, it makes things a little bit cleaner there. All right, so now let's, let's show how to turn fast parse on. So this is going to apply when you have large flat files or, or uh, a data conversion transform. So one of those two mechanisms that are doing dates or numbers is the important piece. If I do that, I can right click on this data source and say show advanced editor. Now, by saying show advanced editor, it's going to show us all the stuff that Microsoft doesn't necessarily want you to see because it's, it's not uh, really usable in most cases. It's a, it's a pretty complex way to look at it. Now, if I were to go, uh, go over here to input output properties, 
what we're seeing here is the blue line that you see right there. See that blue line? Oh, let, me, let me change my color here. Uh, let's go green here. So that blue line that you have coming out is right there. And the red line is this error output that you see right there. So those were our two outputs that we're seeing. So let's explore the file, the source output right here, and let's go to output cause. Now you notice I have a whole bunch of numbers here. And what I have here is if I go look at each column, it's a column by column decision you make, I have fast parse turned on for that column. So again, it's a column by column decision, and you go through and you, set, you turn on fast parse. So you, can, you can actually open the XML up if you really want to get crazy and turn fast parse on for all the columns. But really, it's, it, it, you really need to put some thought into it. So we're about what, seven and a half seconds before or so. Let's see how fast we are now. So I went through each column here, and you'll see fast parse is turned on. All right, now if I right click on this and run this data flow again, our time to beat is about seven seconds. It appears visually faster. And if I look at the progress tab now, it looks like we are from seven seconds, 7.5 seconds, down to about 5.1. So we save about 20 to 30 percent of our time by turning fast parse on. So if you have if you have large flat files, this option makes a lot of sense for you. Now, if you have large databases you're pulling from, of course this is not going to apply. So what makes sense there? Let me open up a package that has some databases in it. Let me go open this uh, this upsert pattern here. Okay, so in this upsert pattern, I have a connection manager down below here. There's a few things about this. This connection manager right now. Let's imagine we have two terabytes of data. Let me quickly just draw a, a whiteboard up here. So let's imagine this is um, my old TP system, and let's call it DB2 or whatever. All right, DB2, Oracle, doesn't matter. Now, if I have, uh, I have two terabytes of data, all right, so I'll just, I, my, my, my keyboard is not working right now, so let's go two terabytes of data. And I want to get that from server one to server two. Well, think to yourself, what is the bare minimum that has to go between these, these servers here? And I'm running, uh, oh, that is just terrible, but it says destination, believe it or not. Uh, what is the bare minimum thing that has to go between server one and server two? Well, at a bare minimum, we have to have a switch from a networking side, right, uh, to get data from server one to server two. So let me just kind of put, oh, it's not let me type that in, so I'll just write switch. It says switch, all right. Because my, my uh, there it goes, all right, good enough. So the bare minimum we have to get, we have to go through a switch to get data from server one to server two. 